Disc will be one of the strongest and most sought after healing specs throughout the entire expansion, to the point where 10 mans will probably want a Disc Priest in every run they go to, and in 25 mans the amount of damage that they actually absorb with their shield, which of course counts as healing on details or on recount, all your other healers will be so frustrated just trying to snipe whatever's left. So it's time for the Disc Priest. I was going to split this between Disc and Holy as one video and Shadow as another, but I really want to get deep into the talents on all three specs because Quite a lot's changed on the face of it, so let's not mess about. Thank you to you guys at the bottom there who have joined the channel as a member or joined Patreon as a patron, I was about to say. Let's just say, or joined Patreon. There's not a banner for that because there's no patrons, but when there are, I'll put a banner on screen. And obviously, like and subscribe to the video. More ways on how you can support the channel at the end of the video. So we're going to look at new abilities and how abilities have changed. We're going to look at talents and we're going to look at glyphs. Let's go. So starting with abilities or our abilities have changed, I suppose the best place to start is Divine Spirit. So Divine Spirit used to sit in the Discipline Tree in TBC. In Wrath of the Lich King, every priest now gets this. So you get both Divine Spirit and Prayer of Spirit, increasing all raid members' spirit by 80 for one hour. Inner Fire in TBC is fairly boring because all it does is give you armor, but there's actually a reason to keep it up now in Wrath of the Lich King. So what it actually does now is it gives you a burst of holy energy, and it increases your armor by X amount. So for me at the moment, it's 3538 and spell power by 174. Lasts 30 minutes or until 32 charges are used. Whereas in TBC it only lasts 10 minutes as well. So now it's just something you want to keep up, but you're rarely going to be taking damage, so it should be pretty much on for the full 30 minutes. But it's nice now that it just gives some bonus spell power. So mana burn in TBC, it destroys 1,021 to 1,079 mana from a target. For each mana destroyed in this way, the target takes 0.5 shadow damage. So the way it actually works now in Wrath of the Lich King is it destroys 10% of the target's mana up to a maximum of 20% of your own maximum mana. They still take that additional damage where it's 0.5 for each point of mana destroyed in this way. But for an example, based on my mana pool, I've got 20k. So I can potentially mana burn up to 4,000-ish mana. But it's only going to do 10% of the target's mana. So in this case, it would still only do 2k to me. But if it was a boss that's got 500,000 mana or something ridiculous, obviously you're going to be doing the full 4k that my mana pool would allow. Hopefully that made sense. So your two hymns now, so Divine Hymn and Hymn of Hope, so Hymn of Hope you'll be familiar with because it was Symbol of Hope, but now it's available to all priests as Hymn of Hope. So it restores 3% mana to free nearby low mana friendly party or raid targets every 1.72 seconds for 6.86 seconds. This is because of my haste. And it increases their total maximum mana by 20% for 8 seconds. A maximum of 12 mana restores. The priest must channel to maintain the spell. So it's nice just to get that mana gain for, you know, a few people in your party and yourself and increasing maximum mana at the same time by 20%. Divine Him heals three nearby lowest health friendly party or raid targets within 40 yards for 3k to 3.3k every 1.72 to 6.86 seconds and increases healing done to them by 10% for 8 seconds, with a maximum of 12 heals and the priest must channel to maintain the effect. This can be particularly nice on fights maybe like Patchwork where you've got 3 tanks that are taking you know, particularly high damage, where not only are you doing really, really substantial heals to them over that time, you're also increasing the healing that they're going to receive. Now this example is only a good example if everybody else is on full health of course, which some people dip in and out of the green on Patchwork, which can be a pain in the buttocks. And this isn't a video about Shadow Priest, that one's going to be coming in the next day or so, so we won't even worry about the shadow abilities new or changed. But as you can see, there's not really that much for priests, uh, well, especially disc priests, but holy priest the same. You don't really get that many new abilities on your way from 70 to 80. A lot of the flair and the finesse comes from talents. But let's jump into the talents. So like all of these class change videos, we're only going to focus on the big ones that have changed. So we've no longer got one specialization, whereas in TBC that sits in tier one. Instead, we've now got twin disciplines, which increases damage and healing of your instant spells by 5%, which is particularly nice. Unbreakable Will's still there, but now it gives 6% per point. So taking your duration of stun, fear and silence effects on you up to 30%, whereas in TBC it would ordinarily be 15%. Now, there's a few talents here that have just moved around, so we won't worry about them too much. But if we look at improved power word fortitude, where it increases the effect of your power word fortitude and prayer of fortitude by 30% in TBC, still does the same in Wrath of the Lich King, but it also increases your total stamina by 4%, which is very nice because priests normally do lack a little bit on the health side. Improved inner fire has moved up, so it's still the same sort of talent. It now increases the overall effect instead of just the armor that it increases in TBC, and that's because it's got the spell power 
power attached to it as well now. So this also increases the spell power gained by your inner fire by 45%. Power World Shield has just moved from tier 2 in TBC down to tier 3 in Wrath of the Lich King and does exactly the same thing. Meditation has also moved, but it now allows 50% of your mana regen to continue while casting, whereas in TBC it's actually only 30%. Mental Strength now increases your total intellect by 15%, whereas in TBC it increases your maximum mana by 10%. Soul Warden is an addition, so this is because Divine Spirit and Improved Divine Spirit has of course been moved out, but you now get Soul Warden instead, which reduces the cooldown of your Power Word Shield ability by 4 seconds and reduces the mana cost of your Power Word Shield by 15%. So this now makes your Power Word Shield spammable. It's only now Weak and Soul that stops you casting it on the same target more than once, but you can essentially bubble entire raids. Reflective Shield now only costs 2 points instead of 5 and has moved up in the tiers, and it reflects 45% damage. Enlightenment is a new talent which for three points you can get your spirit increased by six percent and your spell haste by six percent and now spell haste is incredibly important and you actually need a lot of it on paper but due to talents and due to some talents we've not even spoke about yet actually as a disc priest to hit your haste cap that you want it's incredibly low and easily achieved and this is basically so it brings your global cooldown down to one second so you can spam power word shield every second focus power in discipline in tbc is fairly useless it just increases the chance to hit with smite mind blast and mass dispel even though the hit with mass dispel is nice and the dispel cast time is nice as well now it's a lot more useful anyway so it increases the damage and the healing done by your spells by four percent and in addition your mass dispel cast times reduced by one second so for these two points, you're getting 4% extra healing. Power Infusion is now only on a 1.6 minute cooldown, but this is partly due to Aspiration, the talent, and that's why you may have also noticed that Inner Focus is only a 2.4 minute cooldown. But Power Infusion infuses a target with power increasing spell casting speed by 20% and reducing the mana cost of all spells by 20%, and it lasts 15 seconds. So absolutely no change to this from TBC. It's just now on a lot shorter cooldown, thanks to Aspiration. So Focus will still there, and it still has the same effect of when you take a critical hit you gain focus will reducing damage taken by four percent and increasing healing effects on you by five percent stacking three times so particularly good in pvp but it statically also now increases your spell critical effect chance by three percent improve flash heals new so it reduces the mana cost of your flash heal by 15 percent and increases the critical effect chance of your flash heal by 10% on friendly targets at or below 50% health. This is only really useful in sort of smaller group sizes. I'd say like even 5-man heroics. 5-man heroics is really good in. 10-man, it can be useful. 25-man, absolutely not. You're rarely going to cast flash heal in 25-man because there's just so many people that you can bubble. You'll be bubble, like bubble, 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 penance, bubble, bubble, bubble penance, pom on cooldown as well. You're not going to have that much time to physically start flash healing but because in 10 man and 5 man you're just smaller group play there's only so many people you can keep a, a shield on so you will have time to actually start weaving in flash heals so it can be useful in certain situations renewed hope increases the critical effect chance of your flash heal greater heal and penance by four percent on targets afflicted by the weakened soul effect and you have a hundred percent chance to reduce all damage taken by three percent for one minute to all friendly party and raid targets when you cast power word shield this effect has a 15 second cooldown so a nice multi-tiered talent here not only are you getting increased crit you're also just flat out reducing the whole the whole raids damage it's just a really 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 strong talent. Rapture's a big one and this is how you're going to be able to just maintain all of these shields all the way through a fight just constantly getting mana back because when your power word shield is completely absorbed or dispelled you're instantly energized with two and a half percent of your total mana and you have a hundred percent chance to energize your shielded target with two percent total mana, eight rage, 16 energy or 32 runic power. This effect can only occur every 12 seconds. So now if you don't know about this talent for druids, so revitalize where their hots and everything are giving, giving mana, giving rage, runic power, energy, you're also doing that as a disc priest now. So in a 25 man, with all these hots going around, all these bubbles going around, it, it, you can you can regen a lot of resources for your raid just with one disc priest and one resto druid. Disc priest is one where you don't really want more than one. You know, you look at this and you're like, well, that's great. You know, take take a couple of Disc Priests. I absolutely hate healing with a second Disc Priest. It almost just, it gimps both of you because the weakened soul obviously applies to the, to the target. Like I said before, you can only keep so many shields up and one Priest can keep the vast majority of the raid shielded when they need to be shielded anyway. So there's no point taking two. But 
a really, really strong talent. And if you look at 2.5% of my maximum mana, completely unbuffed, it's nearly going to give me back the cost of the shield, where the shield is 666. What a number. Moving on, Aspiration. We've already spoke about this. So Aspiration for two points reduces the cooldown of your inner focus, power infusion, pain suppression, and penance spells by 20%. Just a really nice talent, not a lot to talk about there. But one of the major things here is the fact that it brings your penance down to an eight second cooldown, which we'll get to penance in a minute. Critical heals create a protective shield on the target, absorbing 30% of the amount healed and it lasts 12 seconds. Just to show you what this looks like, because it looks absolutely awesome, you can see the critical effects from my penance have now put an absorb shield on me. And even your absorb shield from your power word shield can put an additional absorb shield on. We'll talk about that when we get to the glyphs. The cooldown on pain suppression was actually put up in Wrath of the Lich King because it was only two minutes in TBC. So now with the two points in aspiration, it's a 2.4 minute cooldown, but still does exactly the same thing. But there are a lot more options for raid cooldowns now when it comes to the raid, not just the priest. So grace, your flash heal, greater heal and penance spells have 100 percent chance to bless the target with grace increasing all healing received from the priest by three percent and the effect stacks up to three times lasting 15 seconds a grace can only be active on one target at a time so this is really going to be kept up on the tank the vast majority of the time because you'll put a bubble on him then you'll penance then you'll see just from one penance that grace is already fully stacked so the target will now receive that nine percent extra healing borrowed time now this is again this is the big one where it enables the disc priest to be able to get their haste cap very very easily because it grants 25 percent spell haste for your next spell after casting power word shield and it increases the amount absorbed by your power word shield equal to 40 percent of your spell power now because the vast majority of the time you're going to be shielding after the first shield every shield you cast you're now going to have 25 percent spell haste for and on top of this you're getting six percent from enlightenment so thanks to both of these talents you only need 434 haste rating to be able to get down to a one second global cooldown with your shield there is a further haste cap to be able to get down to a one second cast time with flash heal but it's largely unnecessary and then finally penance so it launches a volley of holy light at the target causing 252 holy damage to an enemy or 703 to 794 heal into an ally and this is every 0.8 seconds for 1.72 seconds so you've probably already seen what it looks like but penance is a very very nice ability and after casting a shield so you get your borrowed time prop it casts incredibly quick we will have a quick look at holy but honestly nothing's changed for you as a discipline priest there's only really one thing that's changed as a discipline priest when it comes to the holy talents and that's desperate prayer the fact that you can get desperate prayer as a disc priest quite comfortably because what I should have actually mentioned when it came to the abilities was Holy Nova is now for all priests. It's no longer a talent. And as a disc priest, you're of course going to want to go down and get inspiration as well to reduce the target's physical damage taken by 10% after you crit. So after a crit, they're getting 10% less physical damage. You're also reducing the raid damage taken by a further 3% and you've got tons of absorbs. So as you can see, as a disc priest, it's really, really strong. And also on how long it took to go over those talents, because there is a lot to go over. You can see why I've split this into three parts like the other hybrid classes, if you like. So a quick look at what glyphs are relevant for Discipline Priest. So not going to talk about Holy or Shadow. Obviously, they'll be in their own video. Let's have a quick look at a few disc glyphs. And if you don't know what glyphs are, it comes in when inscription comes into the game and it basically can change or enhance or alter the way certain abilities work. So you have major glyphs, which you can use three of, and minor glyphs, which you can use three of. The minor ones are normally quality of life changes, like removing reagent costs of certain abilities, such as levitate. Spoiler alert, that's going to be one we look at. But let's have a look at the major glyphs first. So Power Word Shield is a fairly obvious one because your Power Word Shield also heals the target for 20% of the absorption amount. Now, when I said you can actually get a shield from a shield, this is exactly what I meant. The healing portion of this, the 20% that it does to the target, can crit. So if that crits, it will proc Divine Aegis, which will put an absorb shield on for that amount. And then you're also getting the actual instant heal from this as well. So you can really double dip with it. So really strong glyph which i think as disc everybody's going to use glyph of penance reduces the cooldown of penance by two seconds so i should have actually mentioned that earlier really because my penance is eight seconds talented and glyphed so if it was unglyphed it would be 10 seconds but you're going to use this glyph as a disc priest pain suppression is a very nice one because it allows pain suppression to be cast while stunned this of course is probably more a pvp glyph but still worth mentioning because you probably will PvP as disc if you're going to be healing. Prayer of Healing can be another option because what it does is your Prayer of Healing spells heals an additional 20% of its initial heal over six seconds. So it applies a hot to everybody it heals, which is very nice. Flash Heal could be another option. So it reduces the mana cost of your Flash Heal by 10%. 
If you find yourself using Flash Hill a lot because you're mainly in five man heroics or maybe even 10 man knacks, then Flash Hill can be an option. Outside of those, there are a few others that could be potentials like Glyph of Renew even, but none of these are particularly good when stacked up against the ones we've already spoke about. And then when it comes to minor glyphs, you can reduce the cost of your fade by 30%, which can be quite nice if you want to use that, but there are better. Glyph of Fortitude reduces the mana cost of your Power of Fortitude and Prayer of Fortitude spells by 50%. So again, just less time sat drinking. Glyph of Levitate is probably one that everybody's going to use because your Levitate will no longer require a reagent. Shackle on Death just increases the range of Shackle. Shadow Protection just increases the spell by 10 minutes. And another one that's very, very useful and probably used on every priest alongside Levitate would be Shadow Fiend, which re you receive 5% of your maximum mana if your Shadow Fiend dies from damage. So if there's lots of damage going around or for some reason something just goes over and smacks your Shadow Fiend, you at least still get some mana back. And that's it. That's a Disc Priest. Ultimately, I absolutely love healing on my Disc Priest. I would probably say it's second to healing on a Holy Paladin. I really like the Holy Paladin for some reason, but the Disc Priest is definitely a close second. It's loads of fun. You'll be wanted in every raid. Only one of you, but still, you will you you specifically, you'll be wanted in every raid because you're better than the other ones. And just a really, really fun healing style. Just spamming absorbs, big penances going on the tank. Being able to throw a renew around if you wanted to, like maybe there's two tanks taking damage, keep a renew on both. Prayer amending on cooldown. If your party starts taking a lot of damage, you can throw out a prayer of healing. You really feel like you've got control of the situation at all times as a disc priest. So next video, we're going to look at a Holy Priest, which I'm going to get started on right now. Please do like and subscribe. It helps more than you know. And I'll roll the outro so you can see other ways you can help support the channel. Peace out. There's lots of ways you can support the channel to keep me here putting out World of Warcraft content and covering all future MMOs. Consider joining the channel as a member. You get access to emotes. Everyone will know you're a member when you comment on future videos because you get a nice icon next to your name. And you get access to members only videos, which I'll be putting a lot of on the channel throughout the year. Additionally, there's a Patreon link in the description as well. Thank you for watching all the way to the end and I'll see you on the next one.